Um, well, I would like to think that we've gotten better. You know, um, I, I set out June because of uh, concerns with COVID and uh, I didn't get back in the gym with those guys until August when school started. And so I would like to think, and that was literally the first time I had ever shook hands with, with Big Gabe, Big Wiz, as, as we like to call him at times. And, uh, you know, I hadn't seen Aiden, you know, in, in, in months and, and Jalen and obviously Malik was there initially, but he winds up going down and needing the surgery. Uh, JJ Trainer, the first time that I had had, you know, had an opportunity to get with him on the court. And so I, I think since then, those guys have all collectively gotten better. Now, have they gotten to the part, to the point in their uh, careers this season where we feel absolutely great about them? Not just yet. You know, they all have a ways to go. I think that the most growth um, has probably been with Jalen Withers. Um, his play has been erratic at times, but he's shown that he can compete in this league, even out of position. You know, Jalen's more naturally a forward that we have to play at the five uh, because of, you know, obviously Malik being down. And I think he's done a, a decent job at, at trying to hold his own and carve out his own niche on both ends of the floor and utilize his strength to neutralize the size uh, of, of some of the other big guys that we face. Um, but he, he's shown a lot of um, potential, you know, for, for a guy that, you know, just, is essentially still a freshman. You know, he's a red shirt freshman last year, didn't play. Uh, he's getting his first taste of it this year, you know, albeit out of position. I think he's started to grow into that role more and more every day. But I've certainly seen growth in JJ as well. You know, he's a kid who we weren't sure if he was going to play this year or not. Uh, same with Gabe. And, uh, you know, I know that Gabe doesn't play much, but um, I, we've seen him get better, drastically better through practice, as well as JJ. JJ had some really good games early on. Starting to hit a little bit of a wall in terms of his effectiveness uh, in the last few games, but he's he's a kid that that we won't allow um, to play soft, even though he's thin. And and he's a tough kid, you know. We're just trying to help him find spots um, where he can utilize his, his skill set, you know. Again, out of position. Um, and so he, he stepped up to the challenge. And, and I think that, you know, when you look forward and I know nobody wants to, you know, talk about next season or, you know, everybody wants it right now. And trust me, so do we, you know, we <laughs> want to go back and beat Florida State last night. Um, but I think down the road this year with Jalen and JJ in particular having to play, you know, JJ having to play period and both of them having to play out of position and wrestle with big guys and, and, uh, things of that nature. I think that's going to really serve them both really well down the road uh, as you look at their careers over time. Well, I want to get more into that, uh, into those guys in particular uh, in a second. But first, uh, something that you mentioned that I think a lot of people have un <clears throat> underappreciated or, or not quite grasped the importance of it really does matter, like you said, that you missed out on a summer, like a real summer, because, you know, I know you always hear about teams going on like whitewater rafting trips or rope courses or team building exercises of all these different uh, things. And especially in the specific position groups where coaches really get to work one on one with guys way more that was wiped out this summer. How much different has that aspect of all of this been just in terms of relationship development? Yeah, well, you know, I think that's a great point, Jeff. I think the summer for, for any basketball player is always a critical time where you can separate yourself and really determine how to win it looks for you. You know, you're able to get in the gym uh, with your coaches, with your teammates, play a ton of pickup, um, you know, play one-on-one, -on -one, two on two, get with your coaches, work on your weaknesses, enhance your strengths, um, get in the weight room, you know, do a lot of different things. And obviously there were so many restrictions around how much we could be with those guys, uh, when they could be in the weight room, when they couldn't, when they could be in the facility at all. Um, so that certainly hampered guys' development. And as far as the, uh, you know, being able to get, you know, get to know each other better and spend quality time, personal time with one another. Um, you know, last summer, for instance, you know, our whole team was able to go up to Coach Max Lake House, you know, and mm -hmm. spend a weekend and do some team bonding and talk about, you know, who guys, is, uh, what their backgrounds were like, what it was like growing up, what their families are like. And, and obviously we didn't get that opportunity this year because of everything that went on. And so 
you know, this this is a brand new team for us. You know, when you look at our roster, uh, and again, I know that, you know, uh, Louisville Nation is probably disappointed with the two losses as we are. Uh, but this is a really young team. And so anytime you take time away from a young team where they can bond and get to know each other and grow and get better, uh, it, it curves the development, you know, and uh, that's obviously something that we can't allow, you know, uh, to affect us now. You know, we're here this January, so we got to go. Um, but that certainly didn't help. Mm-hmm. Well, one thing that I, I would wonder about is is the and and Coach Mack talked about this last night um, the the energy level. Uh, how do you coach energy? And it's obviously a little bit different with guards versus bigs. But but for you, what's that conversation like with with your guys of trying to get uh, maybe light a fire under them a little bit more? So even when you haven't had as much time to develop that relationship, so they really get where you're coming from at all times. Yeah, I mean, every day we try to talk to our guys about having the right right level of energy, having um, the right voice, having a voice, having a presence in practice. You know, if you're uh, physically out of a drill, you're mentally in a drill, you're emotionally in a drill. You know, if you're watching, you know, your teammate is getting a rep, you know, you, I mean, you talk about active listening, like you should be watching everything that they're doing, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, and you should be invested in not only your rep, but your teammates rep. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, again, being in the drill and, and having a voice and having some pop to you. And, um, you know, that's something that, that quite honestly with a young team tends to come and go. I don't think that young guys uh, really understand the value of that. They just think that it's, uh, you know, a talking point that the coach is making. And, you know, it's not as valued by a younger guys. It normally is an older guy who can really understand uh, the importance of, you know, that cohesive energy, you know what I mean? And guys constantly, constantly talking and, you know, helping each other and using each other. And, and you know, we need more of that from, from these young guys. We need them to understand that more. We need them to understand not only how important that is in a game, but how important it is in practice every day. Because if, we, if, we, if that's not who we are in practice every day, then we certainly can't expect to be that on the game floor. And I think that they they, they understand that, but again, it wavers at times and, and, and that's our job as coaches to make sure that um, that standard that does not drop. 